Hello, my name is Reino, and as I've said before, I have the privilege of being part of Fellowship City. Welcome to our very first deep dive, a time in which we open up the Bible, we explore together, and we'll see through this time that what we are busy with as a church plant and what we are called to do is indeed gospel-centered and is indeed very, very biblical. Two weeks ago, we explained what it means to be transcultural and why as a church plant we feel we are called to be transcultural. Last week, we shared a story with you from people in our core group explaining what it means for them to be a family that seeks to be transcultural, as well as uh, what it means for them to be part of a church that is transcultural. What we'll do today is we will read a portion of scripture and then we'll study it together. So Ephesians, it's a book in the New Testament. It's a letter written by a guy named Paul, chapter 2, verses 14 to 16. That will be our portion of scripture for today. Now, before I read it, let me just set the scene. You and I know what division and hostility in relationships look like. You and I know what it looks like when people live hostile towards one another or when people are divided or estranged from one another. You might have seen it in your own homes through um, uh, parental relationships. You might have seen hostility and division in a spousal uh, relationship or in a marriage. You might even have in your own family or no families where even siblings are divided and quite hostile towards one another. A little bit, uh, just a little bit further than your own house. Uh, just in our everyday walk, we, um, we work with colleagues. Uh, we deal with people that uh, serve us in the retail space. Uh, we have people who share the roads with us and all of us know what hostility and division in, on the road looks like. Uh, in our media, we see a lot of polarization. We see a lot of division and hostility between different parties, forever debating who's right and who's wrong, forever wanting to upset one another in the public discourse. Uh, we see a lot of fear and guilt and shame being imposed on people in our public discourse at this moment. We know what it looks like when people are divided and they live in hostility towards one another. And in our country, you don't have to look far to see how difficult it is for people to relate with one another if they are different from one another. So we see along racial lines, along cultural lines, along um, language lines, we see the vision and hostility in this beautiful country that we live in. We know what it looks like. Now listen to this marvelous portion of scripture. The Apostle Paul writes, For he is our peace, who made both groups one and tore down the dividing wall of hostility. Think wrecking ball. In his flesh, he made of no effect the law consisting of commands and expressed in regulations so that he might create in himself one new man from the two, resulting in peace. He did this so that he might reconcile both to God in one body through the cross by which he put the hostility to death. He came and proclaimed the good news of peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. Verse 19, so then, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. So we have division and hostility between people on the one hand, and then we have the most diverse religion on the world, in the world on the other hand, which is, of course, Christianity. Christianity exists of roughly 2 billion people, and in those 2 billion people, almost every tribe and nation is represented. There are very few unreached people groups on our beautiful planet that have not heard the gospel up until this point. So how did it happen? How it happened, what it means, and what the implications of that is, is something that was very, very important to Paul that we understand it. So much so that he spends half a chapter in this letter on this exact topic. I just want to uh, show you guys two really key ideas in this passage. The one is what we find, well, both of them we find in verse 15. It says, one new man. And then the other word in verse 15, that's a main idea, is the word peace. So let's just look at the word new that he uses in verse 15. He uses a word that explains something that has never been created before. 
It's not something that is new in time, like the next iPhone model. We used to have the iPhone and then the three and then the four, and now we have the 12. He doesn't use that word that we would use to say the new iPhone. He uses a Greek word, uh, kainos, which means the first of its kind, something that has never seen before. Now, what Paul says is someone created something new. And this something new is a family among who there are no walls of division and no walls of hostility. This brand new thing, God's family living in peace with one another, was created by Christ himself. Second word that I want us to focus on is the word peace. Now in Greek, the word is eirene. It means to be one, unified means to have peace in the way we use it. it can also mean quietness or rest or shalom no one lacking anything that they might need there are other definitions to this verb as well or to this noun and that is a state of national tranquility or there's exemption from rage and havoc of war it can also mean peace between individual people which means harmony or concord between people this is the exact word that Jesus uses in John 20 when he greets his disciples and he says, Peace to you. This kind of peace that means all of this that I've just explained. So this brand, brand new family that's never seen before, known for peace between them. So here's what, here's what verse 15 says. Jesus created something that no one has ever seen. And that something is awesome. And he made it so that thousands and thousands of years of brokenness, division and hostility could end. No one could ever end it up until that point of Jesus dying on the cross for all people. But he put an end to it. Because through history, especially through the biblical history and the history of the Old Testament, Division and hostility between people has always been working against what God planned for humanity. So God planned flourishing. God planned the establishment of his kingdom. God planned fruitfulness. God planned joy. God planned abundance. And division between people and hostility between, between people uh, has, have always broken that down through the history of the world. God's grand plan is that the church would be the thing that puts this to an end. It's almost like the head of a household saying, this is where it's going to stop. Just one chapter on in uh, chapter 3, verse 10 and 11 reads like this. This is so that God's multifaceted wisdom may now be known through the church to the, ruler, r the rulers and authorities in the heavens. This is according to His eternal purpose, accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. Do you guys see that? God's new family, this brand new family, consisting of people from all tribes, all nations, all tongues and all cultures, living without any division or hostility between one another. That is God's answer and his wisdom towards the evil one. Because what does the evil one do? He sows division among people. He brings hostility in relationships between people. And what does God do? He creates a family in which there's no division. And he pretty much puts the devil in checkmate. That is the joy of being part of the church. Are we too different to get along? Really? Are we too different to get along if we come from different races, tribes, tongues and cultures? Jesus would be the one that says, no, absolutely not. I can bring people together who usually don't mix. I don't know if you've ever tried to mix water with oil they don't mix but you get something called an emulsifier or you make an emulsion which is a substance that brings together water and oil things that cannot mix naturally if you put something between them they can mix and do you know what's made with emulsifier mayonnaise which is something that i am sure most of us love that's the gospel Jesus Christ is the emulsifier between people and cultures and division and hostility who seem to not be able to mix. 
As a church, we look forward to Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 that says, After this I looked, and there was a vast multitude from every nation, tribe, people, and language, which no one could number, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands. We strive as a church plant to be a trailer attraction to this phenomenal main attraction. Our aim to be transcultural is firmly rooted in Scripture. We believe that it is an implication of the gospel. We believe that it is a theme to be found throughout the biblical story. If you haven't checked out our previous videos, please do so. Check on our channel. The next one in this series uh, will be the church as a team in which everyone plays. I also want to invite you to go and check out our digital platforms. Until we see each other again, grace and peace to you. Thank you.